Hi everybody, this is Tim. I'd like to talk about the new feature in Lightwave 2015 called Match Perspective. It, it's a feature to set up a camera in the location of the uh, real camera that actually took the picture. Uh, and in this particular case, um, I was asked recently to uh, use this picture of this storage piece and create an animated shadow that would move from the lower left to the upper right on the floor. Uh, the company provided me with uh, a model to work with, so I did have a model, but their preference was that I don't re-render and do the whole thing in CG. They preferred to keep um, this part photography and uh, uh, I guess I was told that this is actually a comp here that they uh, created in Photoshop and you know and, and made a made a shadow so uh, you know, they wanted to keep the photography but they wanted the shadow to be animated uh, so they gave me a JPEG and I assume they had layered PSD to work with or whatever, but uh, that's beside the point here. Basically, they, they wanted this shadow to be animated, so uh, they asked me to, if I could help them out, and I said, sure, I have Lightwave 2015. I can do anything. So anyway, let's jump over to Lightwave and lay this out. Uh, what we want to do to make this happen is we want to go to the Render tab, and we want to get ourselves an image. So we go out and we load our image. And this particular image I'm going to find out on my desktop. And we have it right here. We're going to leave these uh, all at their defaults and we'll just say OK. And at this time I'm in a camera view so it shows uh, the photography in that view. Uh, this is much like uh, going in here and setting it all up manually. Uh, this set background image button just takes care of that for you. Uh, it also uh, sets the camera width and height to the image size. Okay, so we're all lined up, all good to go with one little button. The next thing we need to do, we need to line our camera well how do we do that well we do that with match perspective right here you see we have all these widgets and but there's a few things i want to do first before i monkey around with these in these widgets um, one thing i want to do is open up the, the panel that gives us some additional functions and that's the end key for numeric uh, i'm used to the numeric panel in Modeler, but uh, I believe this is the first uh, time I've ever seen it used in layout, so that's kind of odd, but whatever. Anyway, the first thing we want to do in this little panel here is, we, what do we want to lock? Well, I don't know a whole lot about any of the image other than the frame size, so I'm going to lock the frame size. That'll keep the frame size of the camera locked next thing I want to do is I want to set an origin. When I click the origin I get a little yellow circle. And I'm going to I'm going to set my origin down here to this little foot right here. I'm going to say that's going to be my origin. Alright. And now the next thing I want to do is I want to set a height from the floor. Okay and we get another widget with an arrow up meaning that's where you want to put your uh, your widget. Now the height from the floor is uh, this works by having basically something that you know uh, how high is. Well they told me this was 958 millimeters which in fact they provided me a model and uh, in modeler it did indicate that it was 958 millimeters. So I'm going to put that top of that widget right there 
and I'm going to move this one right down to here to where this the floor is and I know it's 958 millimeters so I'm just going to type that in right here 958 millimeters okay I've got that set now they've got these little things here you can double click and I don't believe they really lock anything in place other than lock the pivot point you can kind of see how uh, it'd be kind of nice if there was some way to just lock the line and keep it from ever moving again and the reason that is is uh, when I start moving some of these other lines around they're going to overlap some of these other areas and sometimes you can accidentally grab these other lines and, and I don't like it. It'd be nice if it maybe there was a, another little square here or something where it just locked the whole darn thing. So the next thing I want to do is find my uh, horizontal, uh, I guess, horizon points, okay? Uh, so I'm going to just line these widgets up here because that would be considered one that we can find. But what's kind of nice, if you right click, you can get a, uh, a magnified view and you can really place those things if you want, if you want to take that effort. And again, locking it, I don't think it really does anything other than locks that as a pivot point. So in the next one, I'm going to move this one down over here and find and designate this horizon point. I guess it's these x axis point are not exactly sure of the terminology and does it really matter? I don't think so. The next thing I want to do is um, line things up uh, vertically, you know, so everything's squared up and down. So uh, we have uh, these, these uh, legs on this unit is really going to make this work really nicely because I can all those really good and line everything up. We'll do this one here. These are green. These are the verticals. We'll grab another one, this other one, and I'm going to line it up with this one right here. And you can see my uh, grid moving around. That really just means the camera is moving around. And I imagine there's quite a number of internal calculations going on to you know, make all this happen. Next thing I want to do is my, I believe this is the Z-axis, or, or I don't know what the heck they call Like I said, terminology doesn't really matter. It's, it, they lay these widgets out kind of for, for you in a way that it, it really makes a lot of sense. So this is where... You know, it'd be nice if they made these little widgets lock. Because what if I wanted to get in here and make some adjustments? Am I going to get the right one? No, maybe, maybe not. Uh, see there, I grabbed the wrong one. And there, that looks good. And, you know, I try to get this as precise as possible because if you don't get it right, it's going to be very evident in the render uh, because you, you definitely want the shadow to meet down here at the bottom where the, where the legs are otherwise it's just not going to work right so I think I'm getting pretty darn close to having things lined up the way I want it to be everything looks pretty good now the next thing would be to bring in my object, the one that's going to create the shadow. And I've already said this is going to be the origin here. So what I've done in Modeler is I've taken this model that they've provided of the cabinet and I've put that right on the origin. So I know that that's going to come in right where I've determined the origin to be in layout. So what I'll do is just send this object to layout and we don't need any of that stuff. 
and when it comes in, it looks like it's lined up pretty darn nicely. Really, the only important thing here is the feet. Because the feet aren't aligned to the ground, everything will be off a little bit. That one there is off a little bit, so I can just cheat here a little bit, and I can just stretch that out. Nobody's going to know. As a matter of fact, the photo has square posts, and my model is made up of round numbers. I imagine there was a change somewhere between design and actual manufacturing, but uh, you know that won't make any difference because we just want to get a shadow. So the next thing I'm going to do is just uh, load in a floor. So I'm going to just use the little modeler tools up here and throw in a ground plane and that should be big enough. If not, we'll make it bigger. Looks like it could be a little bigger. So we'll stretch that out, make it bigger. And let's just see what the shadow looks like real quick. Uh, what I'm going to do at this stage of the game is I'm going to go in back into my compassing panel and I'm going to just you know turn that off so we don't have the image anymore. And we will fire up VPR and voila, we have a shadow. And it looks like it's pretty grounded really well. So at this point, all I really need to do is to animate this camera in a way, or excuse me, the light in a way that gives them a shadow in which they want to see animated. So, and I'm just using uh, a uh, distant light. You know, so it's you know, nothing fancy at this point. I did that for them earlier this week. You know, I spent a lot of time getting a nice blurry, soft shadow and stuff, and you know, made it really nice. One thing is that seeing how this is a comp, you know, they don't need this unit anymore. So let's go to the unit here and select the unit and come up here and just say, yeah, we want to cast shadow because I mean, if we didn't want want a shadow here, you know, you gotta hit cast shadow. Now this stuff matters, and but we just don't want to see, be seen by the camera. So now when we animate this, we have our shadow, and it will line up to their comp just really nicely. I think it's a really easy and simple solution that uh, New Tech has provided and you know in the end that's I think what we want something easy and simple to use and I imagine there's quite a bit of math involved getting all that to work just right but as you can see uh, you know it did the job uh, yeah it, I need to work on the shadow and whatnot and make it really look pretty but as far as lining up the camera to the image it was provided, it's pretty much a piece of cake. So that's one of the nice new features of 2015, and I hope you learned something from that. Thanks a lot.